Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. Today we're doing a new style of video, which is a quick take of the 2020 Kona Electric. There's been some important updates, so let's hop on the road and talk about them. So you join me in the 2020 Hyundai Kona Electric Ultimate. That is the top trim Kona. Now this isn't a full review, but I've spent a lot of time with previous year Konas and now this particular new one. And there's some important changes that I think we need to have a conversation about. Before we go into the changes, what's good, what's still bad, um, we need to talk about relevance and price point. So <laughs> in terms of relevance, Chevrolet updated the Bolt EV in the US for 2020, same model year as this car. And I was lucky enough to have that car at the same time as the Kona. So I actually have both right now and I've been able to compare and it is crazy how close these two cars are. The EPA range on the Bolt is 259 miles. This is 258. They're within like five or $600 starting price. As tested, I had two maxed out cars. So the Kona was the ultimate, the Bolt was the premier. There was like $2,600 in between them, like really not much money at all, I'm talking pure MSRP. And the Kona just seems like a much better value to me. Um, the Bolt is upgraded to a 66 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is a 64, but in my 70 mile per hour range tests linked up here, the Kona went farther than the Bolt by a half a mile. That's how close they were. So what that means that the Kona is slightly more efficient because with a smaller battery, it was able to go pretty much the same distance. So that's pretty impressive. The other things the Kona has that immediately strike me as better than the Bolt are adaptive cruise control, and it's a really good system, and really nice lane centering. Like right now, the car is doing everything going around this corner. Well, it was a little aggressive there. <laughs> On the highway, at least though, it's pretty amazing. This thing will just go for miles. And I was actually lucky enough to drive a 2019, I think. I guess it was last year's model Kona Electric from New York to South Florida. That was like the first long trip documented on Electrify America. And then I later proved that you can go really anywhere you want to with the current charging infrastructure by driving a Kona from New York City to Oklahoma City, which is exactly halfway between New York and LA. I'll have the videos, of course, linked in the description below. Um, and that gave me a chance to really learn a lot about the Kona. And I really love this car. Now, I personally own a Model 3, and I would be happy to drive this every single day. This car has great features that the Model 3 doesn't even have. That hunk wasn't for me, thankfully. Uh, someone blew through a red light. Uh, I have air-conditioned seats, which are really good, and it's not just ventilated seats. They get cold. These are in the ultimate trim. You have heads-up display, of course. You have a driver-only AC mode, and then there was a really big downside to one of my trips that I did in the Kona, which was it got really cold and the battery lost pretty much all performance at low state of charge. And a lot of people in cold climates will buy a Bolt over a Kona, especially here in the US, because there was no battery heater. But for 2020, there is a dedicated battery heater now. It's a mode called winter mode. I can go into the settings, click EV settings, and there you go, winter mode. Another thing that you get new for 2020, since we're talking about the screen, is this screen. It's a 10.1 inch screen. It's way nicer than last year's model. It's only available in the Ultimate trim. You still get the seven inch trim in the SEL and Limited. Those are the two lower ones. And yeah, it's, it's nice, same functionality really. It works very well, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It even has this really weird feature called Sounds of Nature that will literally just play you sounds like a coffee shop. It's like people crashing blades.
Yeah, I mean, you can set your AC charge level, your DC charge limit. One of the problems with the Kona has always been the cost of charging on Electrify America, which is our most popular like long distance DC charging network in the US. And uh, they recently announced a whole new pricing tier for owners of Kona and Nero EV that have like a charging curve that didn't work with their pricing structure. So yeah, it's still a little bit more expensive than arguably other cars will be paying, but it's not as bad as it used to be. It's, I wouldn't say it's a non-issue, but it's not as big of a deal. And for the most part, you're charging at home. Talking about charging at home, the charge port on the front of this car, I really like. You just pull right up, open the front end, plug in. It has a beautiful light around the charge port. It's a really nice design and uh, no issues there. You have a 7.4 kilowatt charger. And now we can talk about another good thing of the Kona, which is these regen paddles. And there's no change to this. Um, but the crazy thing about the Kona is it can do 150 kilowatt regen. That's insane. I, I That is like more than most cars. And given the fact that it can only charge at 77 kilowatt peak, that's like double. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. So you have four levels. You can adjust them with the paddles here. Uh, and then of course, like the bolt, you can pull that left paddle and it regens even more. So very rarely do you have to touch the brake pedal in this car. But there was always a huge problem with this system, I thought. And I made a big deal to Hyundai about this. It was when you pull the regen paddle and come to a stop, it would not keep your brake lights on, even though the car was held with motor torque. And so you're just sitting there without your brake lights on, similar to sitting neutral in you know a manual car. And I kind of get it, the brakes aren't on, but at the same time, I just thought it was dangerous. But new for 2020, when you pull the regen paddle and come to a stop, it keeps the brake lights on. So that is a really pl big plus uh, from a safety issue, I thought, you know, that, that was needed. The bolt still does not do that. The bolt will just sit there with the brake lights off. The reason I keep talking about the bolt is, you know, again, I, I've already mentioned the price is the same, the range is the same. The, the biggest thing, and I know you guys will comment on this, is the bolts have huge discounts on them and the Kona doesn't. Um, it's hard for me to compare, you know, anything but MSRP. The vehicles are given to me from the manufacturers. That's what they say the selling price should be manufacturer suggested retail price msrp and so that's what i have to go off of but i do understand you can get some pretty good deals on the bolt the kona on the other hand you can only buy them in zev states zero emission vehicle states so that's like maryland connecticut california colorado there's a, a list of maybe 13 i think something like that and a lot of people are like well i'm not going to buy one unless they sell it in my state and i kind of get that it would also be a pain for servicing, but especially here on the East Coast where everything's so close, you can just go to Maryland or Connecticut and get one. And they have discounts on them on the East Coast. I think out West, you're still, you know, they're getting sticker for these things. But on the East Coast, just go to a ZEV state, get one. I think uh, this car is great. It also still qualifies for the $7,500 tax credit that the Bolt does not. So that's where that pricing difference starts to get evened out if you owe enough of a tax liability to cover that $7,500. Let's talk about the bad. There really isn't that much that's bad with the Kona. I mean, overall as a package, it is a lot of car for the money, tons of range. You can easily drive this cross country. Uh, I'm sure the charging times aren't as fast as other EVs. It's no 270 kilowatt from a Taycan, but that's not really where this car is coming from. It's a fantastic daily driver, commuter, tons of tech. Um, but there are a few issues that I have with it. The first and most notably is the brake pedal itself. Now it has gotten better since I've last tested the Kona where before what would happen is you'd get regen as soon as the regen, because it is so strong, would lock the wheels. Like let's say you're braking in, uh, on a wet surface and you touch a painted line and the wheel locks, it would turn regen braking off and then apply friction braking. It's a blending thing and this is something a lot of cars do but what hap what would happen is it would shut regen braking off wait a second and then apply friction brakes so you're like standing on the brake pedal and there's a split second where the car just coasts and i it was such a huge problem to me that um you know i i certainly let hyundai know i put it in all my videos and it is better they have changed that logic but it still feels a little bit off when you're hard braking in the rain i mean the, 
it, it figures itself out, but something is unnatural there. It's hard for me to really figure out what it is. The other thing that I personally don't like is the styling of the Kona. And it also, it's not that big in here. Like the bolt for the similar footprint has a larger interior. Um, this is certainly more comfortable. The seats are better. This is a better place to spend time in the driver's seat. I fit really well in this car. But when I start putting the dogs in the back and our luggage starts to feel a little cramped. Now I know you can get a roof box on this and that might be the best solution for those who need to carry a lot of things. And speaking of tires locking up, we have the opposite problem on acceleration, which is these tires, they're Nexen something or others, very low rolling resistance tires. It's probably what helps it get such great range and be so efficient. But anytime you floor the pedal, when you're at lower speeds than we are now, <laughs> it just roasts the front tires. Like if you're merging on a greasy surface up to highway speeds, you're just spinning tires the whole way. Now, of course, the car is traction control, stability control, and it figures it out, but you know, you'd rather just have forward momentum than it figuring out. So I do think the drivetrain smoothness, the way that it delivers the power, it could use a little bit refining. The Bolt's really good at it. Other EVs as well don't have this problem as much. The Mini Cooper SE probably has the most refined drivetrain uh, uh, feed-in on power than any other front wheel drive EV. So I, I think Hyundai needs to go and drive one of those cars and figure out how to smoothen this power. Because of course we all love instant power when you put your foot down, but unfortunately it just leads to tires spinning and the traction control system doesn't do a great job of managing the power. So since we're here to provide some consumer advice, let's wrap up this video by talking about the trim levels, which I would recommend. So if you've seen any of my other videos on the Kona, I actually would recommend the SEL, the base trim. And that's what I would do for last small years. But now that has changed. It's a significant bump in price, I think three or $4,000 to go from the base to the middle trim. But the middle trim gives you that battery heater, which in cold weather climates is so important. So I would 100% go for the middle trim just for that battery heater alone, plus you get a sunroof and some nicer things. And then you're only a couple grand away from the ultimate, and oh, it's just so nice in here. The sound system is fantastic. You get this beautiful interior, cooled seats, head-up display. It's kind of a weird head-up display with this plastic shield. I don't know, I wish it would shine on the windshield, but you know, can't have everything in life. And um, yeah, personally, I think if you're already going to that middle trim, just bite the bullet, get the ultimate, um, it, obviously if finance has worked that way, but, but I would say just get the features. This is such a techie car. Techie people are going to own them. You may as well get the nice one. And there you have it. The Kona ultimate. I think the best non Tesla EV offering as a whole right here, when you factor in price and performance and tech, I, um, think this car gets overlooked a lot and I wish more people would give this some thought because it's worth every penny. They don't need to discount these things. It's a lot of car right here. I've put a thousand miles on it in three days, four days that I've had it. Thank you, Hyundai. And <laughs> it's been a nice car. I mean, I, uh, I'm excited to get one of these back in the winter time to test this battery heater. And um, of course we'll be drag racing this against the Bolt. I don't know if that video has gone up or we'll go up next, but lots of fun stuff coming. Thanks for subscribing and watching Inside EVs. We will see you guys on the next episode.